A stop you should add to your Japan travel itinerary is a city known for gold, rich culture, and a well-preserved samurai district, Kanazawa. Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, and today we are going to Kanazawa. I think one of the best decisions we made was adding one stop before heading back to Tokyo from Kyoto. Kanazawa, the capital of the Ishikawa prefecture, is a historical city with convenient access to Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. Its main attractions include one of the three most beautiful gardens in Japan, samurai and geisha districts, and contemporary art and architecture. My bento box, dad's super fancy bento. <laughs> Got salmon, whoa, fancy. Mine was hiding all this extra stuff over here. Got some misai, meatball, tamago. Kanazawa is sometimes referred to by people as Little Kyoto because of its traditional charm. So if you don't have time to make it out to the Kansai region where Kyoto is located, Kanazawa is a great alternative, especially if you'd like to experience well-preserved historical architecture and traditions. You can get to Kanazawa from Tokyo in about two and a half to three hours by train, making it the perfect weekend or two to three day trip. Kanazawa was our seventh stop on this trip through Japan. For those just tuning into this series, we started our trip in Nagasaki, then went to Fukuoka, Osaka, Kobe, Nara, and Kyoto. You can check out those other videos on my channel, and I'll leave a link to the series playlist in the description. The best way to get to Kanazawa from Kyoto is by the JR Thunderbird Limited Express, which takes a little over two hours to get there from Kyoto. When purchasing your tickets, you can either choose reserved or non-reserved seats. I loved the ride between Kyoto and Kanazawa. We saw so many different landscapes and weather variations, even a rainbow. We just got to Kanazawa and it is so cold here, but I have these gloves that have little holes in them, so. Yeah, but the station is beautiful. Kanazawa Station was ranked one of the most beautiful stations in the world by Travel and Leisure magazine. One of its most notable features is the massive wooden gate in the front of the station that's in the shape of a tori gate with legs designed to resemble the structure of a Japanese handheld drum. All right, we are going to do a room tour. So we have microwave, kettle, and then we have a washer, no dryer. That's opening the view, a little open closet. And then this is the interesting part, is that to turn on the light, you have to insert this card key. And then, have a random little sink here to nothing. <laughs> and then a fridge. This is the bed. Actually, wow, this view is really nice. Come right here. A little thing right there. Ooh. Ooh, oh my god, this is really nice. Wow. Cool. Got some like little outlets by the bed, got a dad, okay, then the bathroom, oh, oh, this is actually really nice, very nice, a nice deep tub, also, 
these tubs are so small so like I'm 5'4 and I think I maybe barely fit in here so if you're tall sorry blow dryer and then there's no toiletries here because there's actually a place downstairs where you can just grab whatever you need um and then you have towel of course you got the total toilet yes ah. It's been a day of travel. The train was super easy to get on. It was a JR line and it had, I believe, two stops, but it seemed really quick. And what we did is we ended up just getting a bento and then eating it on the train. And then we just took a cab to the hotel because it was raining outside and we could have taken a bus, but we just felt like taking a cab. Basically, Kanazawa is one of the larger cities that actually, during World War II, most of it stayed intact. So you'll find a lot of really well-preserved old historic buildings here, which is really cool. A lot of people refer to Kanazawa as being like a little Kyoto, basically, where you do have a lot of the historic buildings still intact and you kind of have that like old Edo period vibe. There is definitely a lot of things I want to do in Kanazawa, but we only have half a day today and then a full day tomorrow and then on Sunday we leave for Tokyo so a lot to squeeze in it is kind of rainy but that is okay I don't know I think it's beautiful even in the rain let's get going I am hungry my brain can't work anymore so let's start exploring Kanazawa all the main sightseeing spots are easily accessible thanks to the convenient Kanazawa loop bus the loop bus has a right and left loop route that runs every 15 minutes. There's even a one day pass available to purchase at the station if you plan to hop on and off the bus all day. The first stop on our list was the historical tea house district, Higashi Chaya. It's the largest of the three well-preserved geisha districts and has been an established entertainment district for rich merchants and nobility since 1820. Two tea houses are open to the public during the day, and many of the other buildings have been converted into cafes or shops selling gold leaf local crafts. Kanazawa is actually known as the city of gold. It produces 99% of the gold leaf used in Japan. You can find lots of souvenir shops that specialize in Kanazawa's gold leaf lacquerware in Higashi Chaya. I recommend visiting the area during the day when more stores are open. But although we didn't get into a lot of places, I'm glad we were able to stroll through and enjoy the historical townscape. It was a rainy first night in Kanazawa, so we decided to hop on the loop bus and grab ramen. We ended up at the mall next to Kanazawa Station and spent the rest of the night indoors exploring. I was impressed by the store selection in this mall, and the Pokemon Center here was one of my favorites from the entire trip. It is day two in Kanazawa. It is supposed to rain again today, but right now it looks okay. So we're gonna get this day started. We're gonna start off the day with some coffee first and then head on over to the Samurai area. 
On our way to coffee, we ended up walking past the Omicho Market and decided to pop in for a bit. Omicho Market is the largest seafood market in Kanazawa. I'm always amazed walking through these markets because of the variety and sheer size of the seafood found there. Kanazawa is known for its seafood, so definitely add seafood and sushi to your Kanazawa bucket list. I didn't vlog much at the next cafe because it was a smaller cafe with only a few tables and a small bar seating area. So we just got coffee at a really cute hole in the wall place. The shop owner was really nice and the hand drip coffee was delicious. And so is the lemon cake that he actually made himself. And now we are heading to the Samurai district. And then after that, we're going to walk on over to the garden. The first thing we did after we arrived in Nakamachi was walk through a former samurai estate. The Nomura residence was the estate of 11 generations of an upper middle rank samurai family and is filled with family heirlooms including samurai swords and armor. The tranquil garden is also a must-see. The Nomura residence is located in the Nagamachi Samurai District, the neighborhood where the samurai of the Maeda clan once lived during the Edo period. Narrow lanes and small canals wind through the well-preserved historical neighborhood. If you visit during the winter as we did, notice the straw they use to protect the clay walls surrounding the houses from the winter weather. On our walk, we stumbled upon a soba shop where you can get thick soba that's made from 100% buckwheat flour and made fresh daily. Nice little shopping area. So we're just strolling around and I think what I like the most about Japan is that you can literally walk around without a plan and just, it's great. Like I don't necessarily think you need to know where you're gonna eat every day or anything like that. Because if you just walk around and then walk into a random restaurant, more than likely it's gonna be good. So yeah. I wanna go to that pond. The Ken Rokuen Garden is an example of a strolling style Japanese landscape garden. Mm -hmm. 
It was originally the private outer garden of the Kanazawa Castle. It was built over the span of a hundred years by one of the most powerful families in the country during the feudal times, the Maeda family. The garden opened to the public in 1874 and is named one of Japan's three most beautiful gardens. Similar to the straw used on the clay walls, you'll notice the pine tree branches being held up and supported by ropes in a cone shape. The ropes prevent the branches from breaking under the weight of the heavy Kanazawa snowfalls. So right now we are at Kanazawa Castle. We actually just came from the garden, which I've been dying to go to all day. Uh, it is right across over there. And now we are gonna go walk into the castle. Across the way from the garden is Kanazawa Castle Park, where you'll find the partially restored castle and former headquarters of the Maeda clan, who occupied the castle for 14 generations until 1869. Most of the original castle was destroyed by multiple fires over the centuries due to natural disasters. The castle has since been restored using original construction techniques. Okay, we are at Kanazawa Castle Park. This area is huge. There's so much to see, so much land, but it's beautiful though. It's like a little cafe. <laughs> Most of this is actually recreated because the original building actually mostly burned down. Uh, I don't know the dates or anything, but yeah, if you look into the history, it's actually really interesting. The Maeda family ruled over Kanazawa Castle and much of Kanazawa City's prosperity during those times can be attributed back to them. As the Maeda family prospered, the city became a rich center of culture with gold and silver craftwork, silks, ceramics, and more. Today, Kanazawa Castle is a proud symbol of the city's heritage. Kanazawa is a nice blend of historical and cutting edge contemporary. One of the must see places to visit is the 21st Century Museum of Contemporary Art, which has rotating exhibitions by world-renowned Japanese and international artists. You can find lots of interesting contemporary art and stores in the area near the museum as well. I loved our visit to Kanazawa. It was a nice break from the mega touristy areas and I enjoyed taking in the beauty of the historical and contemporary architecture and culture around the city. We rested a bit in a nearby mall before heading to dinner at a small sushi restaurant run by the chef and his wife. Remember, getting sushi in Kanazawa is a must. This trip so far has been filled with so much good food and memories. I can't wait to show you the last two weeks of our trip, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel and turn on notifications so you know when the next one is available. I'll see you in the next one when we're headed to Tokyo. Bye.